AT&T, our parent company, has a message for Google's YouTube. It says it's pulling all of its advertising from YouTube over inappropriate content that's raising child exploitation fears, and it's not alone. The branding expert, Bruce Cattell, of, uh, Chief Executive of Turkel Brands, joins me live from Miami. And uh, Shelley Palmer is here again. Uh, Bruce, essentially, this is about innocent posts on YouTube of things like uh, young females doing gymnastics and then unsavory, arguably pedophilic, comments attached to it and corporate advertisers ar uh, around it. Um, YouTube is saying it's looking what it can do. If you're a big brand, what do you do about this? If you're a big brand, you do exactly what those brands did. You run for the hills. Richard, here's a new term. You're going to hear it here first, but you're going to hear it a lot in the next few years. Adjacency awareness. It no longer is good enough to run ads where you think people are watching. You have to know what's around them. Because, let's face it, nobody knew what was there. It's algorithms that pick where the ads run. But the, uh, the uh, activists, the objectors, they use the same right. algorithms. We call it Google to find where these ads are. But this is slightly different in the sense that in the past, this adjacent awareness has been the adverts themselves. Here, it's user-created content where, which is entirely innocent and wholesome, where contributors, you know, members of the public, nasties, have added unsavory, vile con uh, comments. My friend, I respect that because you're in the industry. You know everything about media. It's what you do every day, but consumers don't. And although that's a very logical argument, it's not an emotional argument. And the consumers don't think about that. Nobody thinks that these companies condone that kind of activity, and nobody thinks YouTube condones that kind of activity. No longer matters. Today, inaction equals endorsement, because someone sees it, and the knee-jerk reaction is the ad is next to that horrible comment, I'm not doing business with that company anymore. That's the way consumers act. So, brand safety. We'll talk about that. It's content adjacency and brand safety are not new concepts. Here's the problem YouTube is having. You've described it perfectly. These are videos of young children doing whatever young children right. do, and pedophiles writing in code are communicating with each other internally, and that community is leveraging a very wholesome environment but to do really bad stuff. But is it possible for YouTube? Yes. Is it possible yes. technologically? No, it doesn't, it's not a technological thing at all because you don't need that. It's called human curation. You have a content and community manager who manages a community, and you step it up YouTube, and you step it up Facebook, and you take responsibility for what's on your platform. All right, but Bruce. Shelley is absolutely right. But, Bruce, will that be enough for companies? I mean, at the yes, end of the day. Yes, that would be enough. E well, at the end of the day, even with human curation, you're still going to have these incidents happening because algorithms are so powerful. What do companies do, Bruce? What the companies have to do is exactly what Shelley said. They have to be aware of everywhere their message is because, once again, adjacency awareness says you are going to be blamed for whatever you're next to. And you can like it or dislike it. You can say it's fair or unfair. But at the end of the day, none of that matters. What matters is that you don't want your brand next to something that people find distasteful. We'll, we'll come to judge. Bruce, staying with you, though, surely, I mean, does it really affect the companies, I suppose, in the case of something as vile as this. But in, in the case of Bruce, in case of just nudity or something that, like, I mean, you know, do, do, do users really associate the two? Uh, I, I'll, I'll take that right now. Yeah. I'll just say to you, either advertising works or it doesn't. Either messaging works or it doesn't. You can't have it both ways. If you are adjacent to something that is not on brand for you and you're a marketer, then your message is compromised and you unfortunately are not going to get the efficacy out of your brand dollars that you want. You also, if you're a publicly traded company, you've got the public screaming and yelling at you. It's like, okay, look what so, you've done. So let's go back to what YouTube can actually do. All right? Yeah. So in the scenario, you've got YouTube that is, it has it has its content, which is automatically putting, um, which is automatically putting comments, yes. and it's automatically putting. Uh, well, no, let's let's talk. Let's talk about the technology, right? Straight up, a video goes on YouTube. 
and it's got a comment section, which the author of the video, and it's user-generated video generally, though companies put up videos and people put up videos, you can either enable or disable comments. If you enable comments, they're open. Now, you can go in and, and edit them yourselves. YouTube does not touch your comments. They don't do it. But is it realistic? Is it realistic to do that, bearing in mind the size and scale YouTube is the largest you, purveyor uh, Richard, of video content. So we now come to the major question of, of the 21st century. Right. L the actual major question, which is what is real and what is fake? What are we responsible for and what are we not responsible for? Technology will, uh, look, we can write these posts by computer. We don't, uh, AI can write the post. You don't even need people to do the comment. The question is, if there was a community manager there, right. then the community manager would be able to go, hey, this is not appropriate for this environment. 